Hey, what's up everyone? Sean here with Blue Ridge Silverhound. I hope everyone's having a great day. Uh, I wanted to share in a little bit with the victory of one of our viewers. Uh, this $2 bill strap, uh, it's strap has a uh, hundred two dollar bills in there. As you can see, they're star notes was recently, um, found by, uh, one of our viewers. We actually did a, uh, did a piece on this note or the strap rather on the live coin Q and a live stream. But I wanted to take some time in this video to go over, uh, kind of the, uh, the values and, and how, how you could possibly sell something like this because it is actually probably one of the biggest fines um, just in general circulation to to this magnitude. Um, congratulations to Maria uh, who was the finder of this particular lot right here. Uh, again, you just never know what you're gonna find at the bank. And I always encourage folks, you know, at least ask uh for what you want uh even if they say no the you know the thing that you could do is just simply ask and um take a chance because if you don't do that you don't know you know if if it's gonna come to fruition nothing not, nothing ventured nothing gained um so in this particular case uh this is a brand new 2017 i believe a two dollar bill bank strap so there's a hundred notes they're all stars here is what is crazy about this strap. If you look at the top right star, you'll notice that it's solid, whereas the bottom left star has a little white dot in the middle. So the bottom left star on this serial number string here with the white dot, that's normal. That's what, it, it, that's what it's supposed to look like. That's the original design style for the star. The stars on these notes denote a completely different run. Uh, these notes were generally used to replace damaged or misprinted notes during the production process. So if one note or a full sheet worth of notes was misprinted or damaged, then they would replace all of those notes in that, in that block, that serial number block with star notes. Uh, but you know, very rarely do we see star note errors and Maria had came across this little gem with count them 100 consecutive star notes all exhibiting an over inked top right star. They call these filled stars or, you know, they, they have a few different namesakes. This is a much bigger discovery than I think a lot of people realize. We, we do come across filled stars generally on $1 bills. And you don't see them too much on $2 bills. So that's that's kind of what makes this a little bit neat. But the fact that this individual had found a full rack of them, 100 filled star error notes, this is unprecedented. So um, she is interested in selling this. But it has to be, I would say it has to be done right to maximize the amount of money that you can make off of doing something like this. So there's really only two, I suppose, methods, the two right decisions in trying to sell this. You just ha really have to uh, think very long and hard about you know the time that it takes. Do you wanna sell all these notes individually? You have 100 notes, and this is something that you can't necessarily sell all in one shot like if you went on ebay right now and posted 100 listings of every single note in this two dollar star pack um that that would be kind of disastrous and the big reason why is you're gonna have a number of collectors that are gonna want them um it's gonna be a little messy because each and every individual note might have a little bit of condition issues on them like um, usually the top note in the strap is generally subjected to a lot of wear and tear. Um, not too much, but sometimes you'll have a bent corner, you know, you'll have a little bit of soiling on there, things like that. And not only that, but maybe a purist error collector in currency might want to have all 100 notes. So they're going to have to bid on every single one of them. 
So when you have 100 notes in the open market of eBay, the one big disaster is that it floods the market. It diminishes the value of the notes as time goes on. With each and every single note that sells, the first one might sell for $100, the second one might sell for $98, but there's diminishing returns as you go. So by the time you get to say the last maybe 50 notes, the first few notes that did sell for 100 bucks or more, after note number 50, 50 of these had already sold in the run. And now maybe they've dropped all the way down to maybe $20, $30 a piece or maybe even less. All right, it makes it less special. So that's the first option. And if I were going to do it, I would probably grade them, to be honest with you. And to give you a little bit of insight and perspective, what I did was I pulled up the most recent listing that I could possibly find for a filled star, or it says solid star error on this PMG holder that you could see here. What's kind of cool and makes all the difference in the world of me talking about this one listing on Heritage Auctions is that this is an L star block. It's the same exact block as the star note pack that Maria had found and discovered. So it makes all the sense to talk about this note because it's the same note out of the same serial number run. Um, only in this particular case, this note graded out a choice about uncirculated 58. All right, so the note has circulated a little bit. It might have a very shallow centerfold, which usually kills a crisp uncirculated uh, grade value and drops it into about uncirculated status. But this note right here sold on February 7, 2023 for $180. So if you submitted this, these notes, to PMG, Paper Money Guarantee, they're an arm of NGC coin, um, you're going to end up paying about $20, $25 per note for the submission. So there is a little cost involved. You have to kind of like spend money to make money, if you've heard that that age old adage, but it doesn't change anything. You're still going to get the diminishing returns if you grade all of them and then you subsequently sell all of them. If you don't slow drip these into the market, and what I mean by slow drip is maybe this week you'll sell two of them, the next week you'll sell another one or two of them, and then you just continue on, that's, that's going to be about a year's worth of sales because it's it's 50 notes if you're selling two a week all the way up until it's all gone that's a slow rate of return for these things you're going to end up spending pretty much 52 weeks is in a year you're going to be spending a whole year selling these if you're trying to move them singularly and there's no guarantee that you're going to make more money again it's the diminishing returns the more of these that are out in the marketplace the less special they are so $180 isn't bad, but that's for one note, okay? It's not like there's a flood of these. So let's talk about option number two. And I did bring this up during the live coin Q&A session, our live stream that we had this past Monday. It might just be better off selling as a full strap with the BEP paper strap right on there still. You could actually grade a whole strap with either P PMG or PCGS banknote. They'd be more than happy to grade that sealed and packed the way it is. And you'll get the solid star error annotation right on the label. I think that might be the better move. Okay. And um, the big reason why is you're going to have a consecutive set. They're all going to be together. That is going to be a lot more enticing to an error collector of this type. And believe me, there are a lot of deep pockets collectors that will pay a lot of money to have something that is this special because the likelihood that we'll ever come across another full bank strap of two dollar bills with the solid star error and their star notes to begin with that's going to be next to impossible and that's why this this little gem that maria had found is truly right as of now one of a kind because there hasn't been another one found there has been another one that hit the market as a full 100 count bank strap. And that is the big reason why I would sell it as a bank strap. Now, let's talk a little bit about value, right? Now, 
are we going to get $180 times 100? Okay, that's going to be $18,000 for it. No, we're not. Because you're going to have the whole strap graded as its own entity. You're not grading 100 different notes. You're grading one item. So all right out of the shoot, you're going to be saving yourself a whole bunch of money in submission fees. I mean, just imagine, you'll probably save yourself at least $2,000 by just grading the strap as it sits. So the market will probably accept it as kind of like a bulk deal, right? We, we don't like talking about bulk deals because you're, you're providing a discount to a buyer because you're selling a lot of something in one shot. Very rarely do collectors or other folks buy consumer goods, they buy collectibles. Very rarely do they give you market value for each piece if you're selling in bulk. It doesn't make any sense. So when we're looking at a total sale of the strap, if we were going to be in public auction, like on heritage auctions, I think is the best route to go with this because they just have a really deep and wide currency auction kind of platform um and they're really really good and they excel in that uh more so than great collections and normally i don't say that great collections is really good for coins heritage auctions does really well with currency and they're probably the top people that i would trust so i could see in a real world auction scenario a full bank strap that's graded possibly selling for between five thousand dollars and $7,500. Now that might seem a little bit low, right? We're probably talking about half of what this one singular note that sold on Heritage Auctions back in February. Yeah, that might be the case. But again, right out of the rip, you're saving yourself about $2,000 in PMG submission fees by only grading one item. So that's kind of where you get some of that, that, uh, that savings some of the trade-off, you know, from selling individual notes to a full bank strap. So that has to be known. Uh, there's not any more additional fees that you have to pay from selling one over a hundred different notes. And then the best part of all, you're selling it in one shot. You're getting your money all in one lump sum right away, as opposed to selling these things two notes at a time, once a week. It's it, you know, you're gonna get a slow drip of money as you go and that amount of money is going to diminish over time because we've flooded the market with all 100 notes individually so that's what i wanted to talk about in this video nice quick just kind of talking about and analyzing the notes its market viability um there have been a few people when we were on the live coin q a and i won't name names one of them that knows knows who they are that uh, that had a lot of doubts about this particular mid, uh, this uh, BEP error, all right? And uh, um, they were under the impression that these notes are barely worth 10, 20 bucks a piece. Now, again, the value is in the eye of the beholder. There are collectors, again, that will pay what they feel is right, okay? It's not a, it's not a matter of, you know, the, uh, the price guide says this is worth $2,000, it doesn't work out that way. We're living in a fluid, kind of like uh, very ever-changing world of e-commerce and the auction world. These these things tend to generate just wild price swings in everything that we buy, and especially in auction settings that could be more true. Um, so there's really no blueprint to follow when it comes to the value on things like this and that's why i threw out a really crazy uh price range five thousand dollars up to about seventy five hundred and that's that's not guaranteed it may even go higher than that it could go lower than four five thousand dollars it really it, i mean there's a lot of x factors involved okay and it, you know it's it could be where the position of the moon stars and all that stuff is you know or it could just really be you know, are the right people in the same room when they're bidding on something like this? Again, there's a lot of things that's going on here. All I do know is that this is an insanely rare find. It is very valuable, you know, 
uh, obviously, and uh, it's a true blue BEP print error. You know, as minor as it looks at first at first uh, glance, I'm telling you this this is a major find. And on a newer note, where there are still quality control issues coming from the BEP. So that's why I wanted to talk about. That's going to go ahead and wrap it up for this one. I would love to hear your thoughts on this debacle. Um, and uh, there is a lot to unwrap here. And, uh, you know, I would love to hear your thoughts. So go, go ahead and post them below um, at your own leisure. Uh, I'm your host, Sean, with Blue Ridge Silverhound. Thank you for tuning in and listening to me on this matter. Uh, it's very exciting. Again, congratulations to Maria on the uh, find. That's fantastic. Um, and that is, ladies and gentlemen, what dreams are made of. So that's going to go ahead and do it. You guys take care. Have a nice one and keep on collecting.